The iPhone 15 is finally here, and for just $800, you can get your hands on the newest model with basically no new features except the one Apple was legally forced into. That's right, besides the USB-C port, the iPhone 15 seems to be yet another upgrade that barely changes anything. As soon as it was announced, people everywhere were once again underwhelmed, bored, and frustrated. And to understand what I mean here, I need to provide some context. You see, the iPhone, as we all know, has the largest market share across the world. In the USA, smartphones are released almost every year, but in the early days, every new iPhone used to be something special. And we are calling it iPhone. Today, today, Apple is going to reinvent the phone. A big upgrade from the previous ones, which used to be very innovative and exciting. But as time progressed, Apple switched their focus from innovation to simply sales. The new iPhone 15 is pretty much the same. Just like every other year, the iPhone 15 has another camera upgrade, a new dynamic island, previously exclusive to premium iPhone 14 models, and an OLED Super Retina screen, compatible with Dolby Vision content. That's it. But it's not really the phone Apple's betting on. They're far more focused on the iPhone 15 Pro Max. And the iPhone 15 Pro Max has one of the best cameras in Apple's history, with a periscope zoom lens that bumps the optical zoom from three times to five times, all for the extra price of a total of $1,200. But once you look past most of the noise, you'll quickly realize that once again, there's nothing really new. A better camera, sure, some cool extra add-ons, but nothing game-changing or meaningful. And yet, according to reports, more than 250 million iPhones haven't been upgraded in the last four years, which means more and more people are desperate to change their smartphones and switch to a newer experience. And Apple CEO Tim Cook believes that the iPhone 15 line will be that legendary series that will break Apple's sales record because of it. When top-heavy companies like this hold so much influence over the US's economy, bad news drops can erase billions in value in mere minutes. And after the last couple of weeks, the economy still looks like a house of cards. I may just be overreacting. My life was stressful enough without financial volatility. And clearly you guys feel the same, which is why you've been flocking to a potential safe haven asset with the help of our sponsors at Masterworks. Over 800,000 people have joined the platform to get access to offerings featuring legendary artists like Picasso, Monet, and Banksy. While the median stock on the S&P 500 500 is returning just 5% this year, public auction info shows work similar to their new Basquiat offering, appreciated in value by over 22% from 2006 to 2022. So it's easy to see why offerings have sold out within minutes. And since so many of you guys have created accounts, the rest of you still have the chance to skip the waitlist and start your collection today. Just make sure you click the link in the description below. In fact, all the technology gurus are predicting that the iPhone 15 will be one of the most important iPhones in history. Even though when you actually look at it, the iPhone 15 isn't revolutionary or legendary. It's just really nothing. The look of the iPhone 15 is insanely similar to the iPhone 14. Apple stopped innovating a long time ago. And now they just think about all the new ways they can sell a bad product to the masses. Yet people buy them. Why is that? Well, of course, Apple has a reputation of being the most revolutionary tech company in the world, providing an unmatched experience. That's why an average American will spend a big chunk of their paycheck on buying the latest iPhone while neglecting other areas of their life because they don't want to look different from the crowd and society. Fear of missing out is the number one focus factor in modern marketing, and Apple is best when it comes to installing FOMO in people. Their marketing advertisements and slogans all reflect a message to people that if you don't have the latest iPhone, you are a boomer who's not keeping up with the modern world. Seeing how fast technology and times are changing, everyone wants to keep up with all the latest technology and latest trends, but they fail to see that the iPhone they're investing their money in is the same as the one they already own. Just because its name is a little bit different and Tim Cook has dubbed it the best ever, people lose their critical thinking and buy them without hesitation. The only change we've seen in the iPhone 15 is the charging port, which is a USB-C type from now on. And this decision is not Apple's own thinking, but something they've been forced to do. You see, the EU has made its guidelines clear that they want Apple to use USB type charging from now on, otherwise Apple will be banned from the European Union, which Apple can't even think of in their wildest nightmares. Losing Europe will be the biggest loss for Apple, and that's why they're letting go of their maverick nature of looking different from everyone else, and switching to USB-C. But that's not all, because the European Union is going to force some major decisions on smartphone companies in the future. In 2023, the European Union passed a new proposition that every smartphone smartphone must have removable batteries by 2027, including the iPhone. This decision was a major strike for Apple because they have always been against removable batteries. Apple has clearly mentioned in the past that they will never make batteries removable. Apple was the first to kickstart the trend of never having replaceable batteries, and every other brand followed them. But the EU's new laws will change everything. Apple might have hoped to get by on their repair services, but it will be an uphill battle. 
the law specifies people should be able to replace the battery with common tools like screwdrivers. Apple offering to do it for a fee doesn't really mean anything, as the law specifically says anyone should be able to do it, and this will cost Apple time and money to change their designs to allow this, and it goes directly against their not so secret goal of planned obsolescence. I'm so sour on Apple because of what they did with the batteries. <laughs> yeah. That was such a dirty thing to me. These new phones won't change any of that, they're just the next part of a cycle. The only truly new thing announced is that after a decade, the iPhones will start using 100% recycled cobalt batteries, which on the surface seems great, and Apple's got a lot of praise for it, and it is a step in the right direction. But one of the main reasons this happened is that Apple has quickly realized that economically, they can't go on for too long before they start running out, and publicly, they have to change something with their cobalt batteries. But instead of, you know, actually just removing the cobalt batteries and using lithium ion phosphate batteries, they still choose to use cobalt. But to save face, they will relentlessly virtue signal to drown out the critics of their cobalt use. Mother Nature. Welcome to Apple. This is my third corporate responsibility gig today, so who wants to disappoint me first? We are in the process of eliminating all plastic from our packaging by the end- Let me guess, 50 years from now when someone else is left holding the bag? By the end of next year, actually. We're operating on 100% clean electricity. What runs on 100% clean electricity? Every Apple office, store, and data center runs on clean electricity, thanks to you and your powerful wind and, and sun. Mm. Everyone says they're planting trees. We've planted forests. Our aim is to permanently remove carbon from the atmosphere. By 2030, all Apple devices will have a net zero climate impact. All of them? All of them. They better. So for now, it does seem like they're off the hook for using cobalt, even though this won't even make a dent in the various human rights abuses taking place in the mines. And in Apple's eternal quest to get more of these resources at lower prices, they fund some of the most oppressive regimes and evil practices around. An essential material for modern phone batteries is just one example. The majority of the world's cobalt comes from the Democratic Republic of the Congo, a war-torn African nation exploited by the world for its mineral wealth. Demand for cobalt tripled between 2015 and 2020, and it's gone up even more since. And so to keep up with demand and squeeze out even more profit, mines in the Congo use child labor and awful working conditions, ripping up the land, poisoning the population, taking everything they can, and polluting the entire atmosphere. This is the bottom of the supply chain of your iPhone, of your Tesla, of your Samsung. I mean, I'm just naming those companies. Right. Uh, it's all of them, right? All of them. This is an industrial cobalt mine where there's not supposed to be one artisanal miner. Now that's the term used for people who are just digging by hand as opposed to tractors and excavators. There's not supposed to be one here. Then after a couple years, the phone they made from it just ends up in a landfill anyway. These aren't products that people actually need or even necessarily want, especially when you ask why this phone in particular. They just want the newest, best version. This system of exploitation for temporary products is the true legacy of the iPhone, and there's no sign of any changes in the future. That's why you know when Apple says they care about the environment and climate change, they couldn't be any less truthful, being just another way for Apple to cut down on every single possible dollar of production in order to maximize profits. And if Apple really cared about the environment, don't you think there'd be no need to make a smartphone every single year? Or even if they did want to make a smartphone every year, why wouldn't these smartphones last longer? The fact that they're built with planned obsolescence shows that Apple really doesn't care about how long these last. And so they can virtue signal as much as possible, but they'll never actually take a step to improve their product for the good, or their customers, or the environment. But why have things got to this level? Why has Apple reached this state of stagnation, where they don't want to make drastic changes anymore and stop being the kind of innovator they used to be under the leadership of Steve Jobs? Well, the thing is, smartphone technology technology has almost reached its final stages in terms of innovation, and it's not really anyone's fault because this is consistent with every technology. When Steve Jobs showed the first ever iPhone, that was one of the biggest technological shifts in history. In the coming years, smartphones evolved very rapidly, and Apple used to come up with the most iconic things, which is why they established themselves as the best in the market. But everything good must come to an end, and progress started to become slower. Now companies have no idea what they should do next. For example, when Apple came up with the idea of having two cameras on a smartphone, everyone began to copy them by adding more and more lenses, but it too reached an end point because you can't have infinite cameras that will only make the design of the smartphone ugly. Everything that was once considered groundbreaking has become standard for smartphones, and that's why excitement has faded away. There are so many players now which makes it harder for every company to stand out, and a point of no progress was inevitable. The stagnation in technology has translated to stagnation in the market. Estimates put 2023 are hitting a 10-year low for the total amount of phones shipped, no new features to break the monotony and get people 
motivates it. Now, by far the most common reason to buy a new phone is that your old one has stopped holding a charge. Ironically though, this could all play into Apple's hands. Other smartphone manufacturers don't have the cult-like obsession that Apple can get out of some people. They're constantly competing to be the best other option or to roll out the newest innovations. It's why other companies like Google and Samsung have been releasing folding phones and flip phones, whilst Apple steered well clear. These gimmicks seem like possible solutions to the stagnation problem, but insanely high price tags and low adoption rates have kept them out of reach for most. Once the technology is there, Apple might dip their toes in, but for now, they're banking on doing the same thing and seeing the same great results. It's because just like designer clothes, people are buying the brand, not the product. For smartphones, Apple doesn't need to innovate. They can happily pump out more and more phones, which only last a few years and keep breaking it in. The results from this latest release will prove whether the strategy still works. Apple's short-term dominance of the smartphone market is all but guaranteed. They've cracked the code for overconsumption by making sure that the actual product matters far less than the name and brand. But once smartphones die out as they get replaced by the next innovation, Apple will be left high and dry. That's why they're putting so many resources into looking for the next smartphone. The market which will define the next two decades. And that's why they're focusing now on virtual reality and AI for the next innovation, as they unveil their new Vision Pro. And while the AI market is already getting a lot of attention from every competitor Apple has, virtual reality is still not a hot topic. And so they will continue to make more headsets until we reach the end of it too. And that's what's fascinating about technology. You need to adapt, you can't utilize an idea forever, and you always need to reinvent yourself if you want to survive. And Apple are geniuses at this. Their first major success was the graphic user interface, which they stole from Zero in a chaotic way. Then they focused on Apple computers for a decade to max it out. And when they realized that there was nothing more significant they could do to make home computers more extraordinary, they switched their focus on the iPhone. And now that time has come for the iPhone. Apple knows that the iPhone is not the future anymore. The Vision Pro is. People used to wait for new iPhones every year, lining outside the shop, doing whatever they could to get their hands on it. But more and more, this trend is dying out. And as the era of iPhones slowly dies out, a new wave of powerful, addictive, freakishly dystopian technology is on the horizon.